In the Earth's 4.6 billion years of history, there have been five major mass extinction events. And the first was the late Ordovician mass extinction event, which occurred 445 million years ago. The first major mass extinction event in Earth's history sent 85% of marine species to their graves and was the second largest loss of genus following the Permian-Triassic extinction event. But would you believe that this mass extinction was, in fact, caused by plants? Let's dive into how plants first came onto land and their role in the first mass extinction event. Some scientists believe that a supernova 6,000 light years away sent a gamma ray burst towards Earth during the Ordovician period, and that the powerful radiation from the event wiped out much of life on Earth. But it isn't the most widely accepted theory. The current leading theory to explain the Ordovician mass extinction is an ice age. During the Ordovician period, the concentration of carbon dioxide in Earth's atmosphere was eight times higher than it is today, so the planet was quite warm. At that time, about 440,000 years ago, towards the end of the Ordovician period, Earth's temperature dropped sharply in the span of a few million years. Dr. Francis McDonald argued that the cooler temperatures led to the formation of so many glaciers that sea levels dropped as much as 90 meters in some places. Considering that most creatures in the Ordovician period lived in shallow coastal waters, the drop in sea level caused by the Ice Age would have been like an inferno for them. But the real question is, why did Earth suddenly go into an Ice Age at the end of the Ordovician period? Dr. Francis argued that it was caused by massive tectonic movement. Near the equator, where the weather was warmer, Huge mountain ranges were forming that looked much like the Appalachians in present-day North America. As thousands of kilometers of volcanic archipelago arose in the equatorial region, something amazing happened. The calcium and magnesium in many rocks exposed on Earth's surface began to react to the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. In other words, the carbon dioxide started getting trapped in the rocks. Dr. Oliver Jagotes who co-authored the study, believes that this phenomenon occurred over an area of up to 5 million kilometers squared, which led to a decrease in the concentration of carbon dioxide in Earth's atmosphere, as well as a reduction in the greenhouse effect, and eventually a global ice age. However, back in 2012, Professor John Parnell, a geologist at the University of Aberdeen in Scotland, claimed that this was not enough to explain the mass extinction event or the climatic drop in carbon dioxide. So he came up with an interesting hypothesis on his own, which was the emergence of land plants. Fossilized spores of primitive plants are often found in the middle Ordovician strata from around 462 million years ago. What's interesting about these spores is that unlike aquatic plant spores, these spores are enclosed in a cover of sorts. This is a sign of these plants' terrestrial evolution and serve to protect the spores from the dry environment on land. Based on these facts, Professor John Purnell suggests that primitive plants like mosses slowly began to take over Earth's surface from the middle Ordovician period. Of course, like certain modern mosses, they settled first on rocks close to water. Then, something amazing happened. As lichens and other plants began accelerating the weathering of rocks to access the minerals they needed to grow, like phosphorus, potassium, and calcium, more plants like these began seeping into the biosphere. After the land plants had absorbed their fill, the leftover minerals were washed away by rainfall and carried out to the sea. Professor John Parnell noted that phosphorus was 60 times more abundant at the end of the Ordovician period than before. And Professor Jonathan Nickel of the University of Sheffield claimed in his paper that calcium weathering also increased by up to seven times near the end of the Ordovician period. But what does an increase in minerals have to do with mass extinction? The answer lies in eutrophication. As minerals like phosphorus, which is important for plant growth, were washed into the oceans, it was like a feast for the marine plants of the time. 
We're talking about massive algae blooms. But the real problem came when the aquatic plants that thrived on these minerals eventually died out. As aerobic bacteria decomposed these corpses, the bacteria began to consume the oxygen in the water. In other words, like a mini butterfly effect, as the amount of oxygen in the water decreased, other marine life began to die from a lack of oxygen. This makes more sense when we remember that algae blooms are still a major environmental problem, as they reduce the amount of oxygen in the water they occupy. And the decrease in dissolved oxygen led to an even bigger problem. When there was plenty of oxygen in the water, carbon could react with the oxygen to form carbon dioxide, which could then escape back into the atmosphere. But as oxygen disappeared from the water, the carbon that lost its bonding friend simply began piling up on the ocean floor. This caused the concentration of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere to begin dropping dramatically. Eventually, the decline of carbon dioxide, a greenhouse gas, caused global temperatures to plummet and accelerated the extinction of many species. But is there any evidence of this? Yes, there is. When carbon that doesn't bind with oxygen sinks to the ocean floor, it forms black shale. And in 2013, Dr. Michael Milchin discovered a variety of black shales in what used to be coastal areas at the end of the Ordovician period. So there's a very clear sequence of events that occurred starting from the early to mid Ordovician period. First, plants moved on shore. Then minerals from the rocks they weathered led to intense eutrophication of the oceans, which in turn led to a decrease in oceanic oxygen and greenhouse gas levels. Of course, the massive volcanic archipelago near the equator likely would have provided a lot of rock for carbon dioxide to get trapped in and played a major role in triggering the Ice Age. Thus, at the end of the Ordovician period, plant land migration and geologic activity brought about the first format of life on Earth. Ironically though, the very land plants that caused this mass extinction event also made the planet ripe for new life. Land plants generated oxygen, fertilized the soil, and most importantly, as the bottom of the food chain in the terrestrial ecosystem served as a bridgehead for animals to take their first steps on land. Isn't it ironic that one small step by plants towards land led to both a mass extinction event and the evolution of new life? Science is a window to the world, and this has been Science Dream. Thank you for watching.